Are we responsible towards that? Reality is everything is being produced. Anything is being produced, yes. right? Yes. The drug is being produced and sold, right? The liquor is being produced and sold. The cigarette, this good car, and everything in it. And they will write the bigger and a bigger letter that this is going to cause cancer. <laughs> <laughs> and it says the government is permitting it to be produced and getting the tax out of it and running the government. Right. In fact, now the greatest, you know, uh, tax, at least in India, you know, is coming from the liquor. Right. And the same government has two departments. One is for selling the liquor, giving permit and selling the liquor. And the second department, which advertises against taking liquor. Right. So one is called Abkari Vivar. The other is called Madhya Nishadhi Viva. They, say they belong to the same ministry. <laughs> <laughs> and the fund of this Madhya Nishadhi Viva is coming from the Abkari Viva. <laughs> now just imagine a government which is surviving on the tax, which is coming from selling leaf curl, which is spoiling thousands and hundreds of families, you know, lakhs of families. Right. What to think of the moral of the government? In most of the liquor business in Andhra Pradesh, 43% is held by you know, two families who are to do with government. Mm. 43%. Yeah, this is the data. 43% of the liquor business in Andhra Pradesh is owned by two people who are in government. <laughs> by two families. Uh, if I be a little bit critical and share one, uh, a current issue happening in the country, Bhutan, is government has somehow come with the policy to ban the topic of uh, imports and then liquor imports and its consumption as well. But still, they would keep the separate quota for the high officials so that they can have high consumption at a cheaper rate. So that is something that is also contradictory in nature. One way they are trying to ban on tax with the heavy taxation. They want to ban the consumption and production and the import. On the other hand, <laughs> they are keeping the separate quota for the high option. This is not a direct reason, this general picture that uh, that is quite clean in the country. <coughs> what could be the Reflection, your reflection on such kind of thing. Yeah. In fact, when you now have the overall picture of things, okay, many of these contradictions will start becoming very apparent. <laughs> and you can also see that when it comes to production, the cost of the things which are necessary physical facility is very low. Cost of things which are not necessary physical facility is very high. So I have been mentioning this wheat is 10 rupees a kg and the cream, the face cream is 10,000 rupees a kg. That's the order of difference. So the necessary physical services are kept very low, right? And the unnecessary physical facilities, you know, physical facilities are high, so you know, priced so high. And it is not that the cost is so high, okay? The profit is so high, not the cost. If you look at most of these facial creams, you know, the cost of production is very low. <coughs> so this is first question, what to produce. The second question is how to produce. If you look at the answer of this, okay, it has to be produced through a process 
characteristics of this. One is that it is cyclic in nature. The other is that every unit which is involved in this process is enriched. Okay. <coughs> I will explain to you about it. If you look at the nature in, a, in the forest for example, okay, what is happening is that you have things like, let me draw it here. So you have things like soil, water, <laughs> then if you have things like plants and trees, <clears throat> now if you look at this soil and the tree, the tree is growing out of the soil, right? The tree is growing out of the soil and then the leaves and the flowers and the fruits of the tree fall down on the soil. They get converted into the soil. Right? So soil is getting converted into the plant, into the tree and the trees and the plant are getting converted into the soil. In the sense it is cyclic, right? Soil to plant and plant to soil. This is what is happening in the nature, right? Without your involvement. Right? In the process, yeah, if you go to the forest, your involvement is not there, right? In your farm house, yes, your involvement is there. That will place later. Okay, that's first. Look at this. The soil gets converted into the plant. The plant gets back, you know, converted into the soil. So it is cyclic in nature. Right? This is one point about this amortization process. Second is, when this soil gets converted into the plant and the leaves and the fruits and the flowers of this plant, you know, gets back to the soil, gets converted into the soil, the soil becomes more fertile than before or less fertile than before? More, more, more. more fertile than before. So that means in this cyclic process, the plants are enriched and the soil is also enriched. Right? <coughs> that is every unit is enriched. This is how the production is taking place in the nature by itself. Okay. And you don't have to do anything. <laughs> Left to itself, this is what is happening, right? Now you can place these birds and animals. You will find that they are all related to each other in a cyclic manner and every unit is getting an interest in the process. So if you look at the forest, all three of them are there. The soil, the water is there, the plant and the tree is there and the animals and birds are there. Right? And they are all related to each other in a cyclic manner. And in a 
a mutually fulfilling manifest. So they are cyclic in nature and every unit is enriched in the process. That is why you don't have to do anything for this forest, right, to grow. You don't have to throw urea on it, right, <laughs> or do watering. Okay. Do you do anything for the forest to grow? For this plant and this soil and the animals to be there? Nothing. <coughs> they are enriching each other in a cyclic manner, right? So, this cyclic process is going on and every unit is enriched in the process of this cyclic order. Right? This is all happening in the forest and in fact you keep getting out lot of you know, fertile soil from the forest, the water from the soil, you know, forest, lot of forest produce the trees right? and animal residues, all that you get from the forest without giving anything to it. Is that clear? And all this is happening anyway. What we are saying, that now when you place the human being here, <laughs> okay, you can see all these are and reaching human being. Right? This soil and water is and reaching human being. Right? The plants and trees are also and reaching human being. Okay? The animals and birds are also and reaching human being. <laughs> Now when I indulge into this thing called production and work, what I am doing? I am working with rest of nature. Right? So when you are working with, your na with the na rest of nature, what is your natural acceptance? To be enriching for them or to exploit them? Enriching. To be enriching for them. Right? That is all that is being said, right? That my process of production has to be such that on the one hand it is cyclic in nature, on the other hand it is enriching for every unit in nature. Right? So now you can see, if you move, put this connection here, okay, from human being to soil to water, from human being to birds and animals, from human being to plants and trees, there is a question mark there. Right? <laughs> so you can see there are question marks here. Everywhere else there is tick mark. So this meaning of Avartan cell process is that if you are able to mix your that instead of question mark, there is a tick mark, right? At each of these, you know, place, that is, you are enriching for rest of the nature, then this production will be called an avartan cell process or a cyclic enriching process, right? <coughs> so cyclic and enriching process. Avartan is cyclic. Yeah, Avartan means <coughs> the one which goes around the world. <coughs> is cyclic. Avartan is the one which is used in a cyclic manner. Avartan is that one which is used in a cyclic manner without break. So that's the literal meaning of this word avartan. Very technical. So this uh, this same concept has been like uh, now it is coming as a what we call green production uh, concept. So is there any 
relationship between the Brinza uh, Western culture and the Bihar. You see, I mean, nowadays it is you not know, talking about the sustainable process. Right? The only thing which has to be added, when you are saying sustainable, it implies cyclic. But if you look at the nature, it is not just cyclic. Right? It is enriching. <coughs> so it is more than that. It is not just sustainable. It is cyclic and it is enriching. So this enriching part is important. So every day your forest, you know, is getting richer, you know, it's getting enriched. Right? If you are not disturbing this forest. On the <coughs> other hand, if you positively <coughs> contribute to the forest, it will become more enriched. The human being can contribute, right, to this process, okay, making it more enriched. The example I was taking about this wood, you know, the amount of wood that you would require in your lifetime can be obtained from four trees which are fully grown up, right? full tall trees. How many trees can you plant? So your capacity to enrich rest of nature is far more than any unit in nature. Because no other unit in nature has this capacity to plant. <coughs> you have this capacity to plant. So you can be more enriching with the rest of nature right? than any other thing in the nature. If you have the right understanding. Not otherwise. So look at this. Whether you are ensuring this mutual enrichment from your side, right, for the rest of nature or not. Okay. So if this is the criterion, now you will have to answer <coughs> all these questions whenever you are talking about production and work. Number one, what you are producing, is it necessary physical facility or unnecessary physical facility? Right? Number two, if it is necessary physical facility and I am producing it, Am I producing in a manner which is cyclic and enriching? Or am I producing in a manner which is violating the nature or exploiting the rest of nature? So these two questions are important. Okay. And all of us who think are involved in production. Okay directly or indirectly, we must address to this question. Right? All of us who are in the, you know, in, you know, uh, connected to this issue of technology, the issue of you know, production, the issue of management, <coughs> the issue of commerce, right? All of them, the economics, they have to, you know, address themselves to this question. What am I producing and how am I producing? Am I producing the necessary physical facility? Or I am indulging into unnecessary physical facility production? My production process is cyclic and enriching or it is exploiting the nature, violating the rest of nature. This is briefly about the production and work. Let me see if there is any problem about, you know, any question regarding this one, education and sanskar, regarding the health science and regarding the production and work. Okay. We will take it up, otherwise we will break of the day. And tomorrow we will start talking about this remaining two dimensions, right? Justice and production and then explain it. <coughs> I have a set of questions. Uh, I have a set of questions. Uh, first one is, first one is not actually a question, but uh, something that uh, struck me back. 
uh, when I, what I learned. In my 11th and 12th standards, uh, we have learned in a Sankha uh, text where a king, has uh, a king has an advice by his friend who is a realized being. Uh, when it comes to intake, uh, that he should not eat too much to be strong or good looking, or, uh, but he should eat with a, to a limited uh, quantity that will best, that can survive him to best serve the rest. And I thought that time, uh, I just learned it only to write the examination. And I thought it is not applicable to me because he's a king, he doesn't need to be strong, he doesn't. Uh, need to be uh, good looking or so on, and that just applied to me. And then uh, I obeyed, although I uh, learned it, uh, although I was also, uh, I have never become strong anyway, <laughs> but now I can see that uh, it made sense, but somehow in our education system, uh, that analysis, where applicability to one's that all the philosophy still, uh, was not actually uh, taught well. When it comes to the work in production, uh, your definition, the rest of the nature, uh, initially I included everybody, everything, uh, earth, land, uh, and even human being and so on. But I do not know if you get to human being, because when you consider human being, I found a uh, little bit uh, hard to uh, think of production, because sometimes when human being works with human being, uh, we produce human being. That's how we are produced. Shall we consider this as part of a production? <laughs> then, uh, further, on this aspect, uh, I'm wondering, do we need to have analysis on how many human beings do we need to produce? You know, the population is still a problem, and then to what we see as they should the human being be produced is another question that is uh, occurring to me when we discuss it in the cycling process. Then again, uh, again on production, uh, I can think about three things being produced, goods, services, and knowledge. So when the human being on the good part, sometimes we work on animals, if the rest of the nature can be animals, to get uh, things out of them, production, such as wood from the sheep. That is one, I thought, uh, which I would like to uh, throw it as a question. Then, uh, human beings work with human beings. Then your example about doctors, uh, although we give medicine and so on, but doctors get money out of it, right? I don't know whether which it should be considered as part of production. But sometimes we work with human beings to generate knowledge, especially in research, uh, surveys. So that's what I thought. Uh, I don't know whether we should consider it as part of the production. This is a question. Yeah. <laughs> you see, we have been calling them all as work. So whether it is in the form of some physical facilities or in the form of some services or in the form of some knowledge. Right? Now I think we need to make the difference. It is important, I mean, all of these activities are important. <coughs> but then we must differentiate between them because when we differentiate between these, we are able to see what is the outcome of it, like what is going to be the return. So when you say work, the return of this work is some physical facility. But then the return of the behavior is happiness. And happiness is not less important than the physical facility. For human being, happiness is also important, right? And physical facility is also important. And if you think in terms of the priority, happiness has a higher priority over physical facility. But then it must be clear that the outcome of a behavior with human being, if it is a right behavior, right, it will be mutual happiness. So when I am doing the behavior, I will focus on the return in terms of right, you know, mutual happiness. That is not happening. Today when I am indulging into behavior, right, it is not leading to mutual happiness. Right? Because that right understanding and right feeling is not there. 
So while we are doing behavior, we are not ensuring mutual happiness. On the other hand, when you are you know, involving myself into an activity of work, then the outcome of it will be some physical pain. Right? This clarity has to be there. That is what I am saying. Okay. Today we have mixed up all these things. And therefore, what result has to be obtained out of this is not clear to us. So there is a lot of confusion. For example, when I am involving into this activity of teaching, the right, return of this teaching, which is a behavior, is going to be mutual happiness. My happiness and the happiness of the student. Right. That mutual happiness is what is the return of it. Right. Now, is that taking place? No matter. The result of teaching, this is a behavior. Is it resulting into mutual happiness or no? Yes. If it is resulting into mutual happiness, it is a right behavior. If it is not resulting into mutual happiness, <coughs> it is not a right behavior. Similarly, the result of the work will be some physical facility. Right? So the mistake we are making is that we are not able to distinguish between the two and therefore not able to see the return okay, properly. If we can see them separately, then we can also evaluate whether the appropriate returns are coming. Results are coming out of it or not coming out of it. <coughs> and because this teaching and learning is no more a matter of happiness for both, therefore so much of cost is involved into it now. Okay. Because then it has to be done out of this, you know, return in terms of the money, right? So education is becoming costlier every day. So something whose return was mutual happiness and not the physical facility has suddenly become one of the most costly <coughs> things. Similarly, this health and science, right? This giving advice for health, which was a behavior, right? And because you are not drawing this, ensuring this mutual happiness out of it, right? It has become a very costly, you know, activity. And today, the major cost involved is in terms of education and sanskar and health and science. These two activity, which has to be, which has to largely do with the part of behavior. When it comes to preparing medicine and giving medicine, that is part of the, you know, work with the rest of nature. So there this physical facility is involved. So I'm, what I am saying is that we have to start re-looking at all of these things. Sir, about that asana and uh, pranayam, if uh, any kind of practical possible. Uh, can be done, but we are not included as a part of this workshop because you know each of these points we are making you know, can be expanded to a very large scale, and so it's a, you know this whole process will then expand to at least one year. <laughs> but certainly, some you know practice is required. You know it can be. You know, taught properly this asan and pranaya. What I have done is just, you know, draw your attention to the essential purpose. The purpose of asan is to <coughs> ensure the balance in different parts of the body. So when you are physically working, <coughs> then some part of the body gets over strength as compared to the other part of the body. So that imbalance has to be, you know, taken care of. So the asans which are designed are designed in a manner that it balances all these 
strength in the different parts of the body. Similarly, if there is a this you know imbalance in the breathing, and you can see if you get angry, the first thing that disturbs is your breathing. Okay? 